My name is Sam Vatnin, and I'm the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. Leonard Maltin's movie guide requires no booty, minimal surfing, and no software or special hardware. The guide is always on, and it is authoritative in the best sense of the word, implying erudition rather than bullying. The guide is updated sufficiently frequently to remain relevant in its field, though, admittedly, a web presence with real-time capsule reviews, peer-reviewed content, and user-generated commentary would have leveraged the Maltin brand to good use. A recent iPhone, iPad application of the guide is a step in the right direction, hopefully to be followed by an Android thingy. The Maltin guide presents us with a deeper problem. In an age of crowdsourcing, and mob wisdom, made available on every mobile device. Why should we invest in a reference book with dozens of user reviews available on websites such as imdb.com and rottentomatoes.com, covering every film ever shot, however obscure? Why bother with Maltin's selective, voluminous, fine print, doorstopper movie guides? The answer is because Maltin is the Britannica to IMDb's Wikipedia. Maltin offers expertise, whereas the layman who write in IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes offer or register opinions. There are two Maltin movie guides. The veteran and venerated Leonard Maltin's movie guide annually published since 1996, and a lighter weight but equally authoritative Leonard Maltin's classic movie guide, whose second edition covers movies made no later than 1965. The guides are largely mutually exclusive. Movies are covered either in the one or the other. Each volume prefers between 10,000, the classics guide, and 17,000, the annual tome, capsule reviews. And what a marvel these snippets are. Each capsule review comes replete with a plethora of information culled from hundreds of sources. For each movie, there is the date of release, viewing time in minutes, a quality rating assigned by the guide's editors, more about them later, as well as the MPAA's parental guidance rating. There are also credits of directors and actors involved, a brief, a brief synopsis of the plot, and even gossip, cameo appearances, anecdotes, and the social and cultural context of the work. And all these neatly and articulately folded into a tweet-like hundred words of less or less. What a magnificent feat. The annual guide also includes an incisive and insightful essay in the form of an introduction about the current state of the cinematic arts and commerce. Lists of movies by topic, and this year we have the favorite films of the new millennium list. Mail order and online sources for home videos, admittedly a USA-centric feature. A widescreen glossary, and an index of film stars. In this year's edition, regrettably, the index of movie directors is gone. The Classics Guide augments these offerings with 25 vintage movies you really shouldn't miss. So, so there's a lot of added content. But back to our opening salvo. Why not stick with IMDb or Rotten Tomatoes? Both these websites now aggregate critics' reviews from a wide variety of print and digital sources. Let's compare the situation to a health problem. When one is faced with a health problem, one consults a doctor, or two, if one seeks a second opinion. No one I've heard of cons confers with 10 or 70 or 5,000 doctors. The element of expertise is crucial in choosing with 
the choosing the doctors to consult with. We choose experts, not every doctor. The authors editors of the two malting guides are not merely the world's leading critics, which they are, but some of them have actually worked in the film industry. They bring to the proverbial multi table invaluable insights gleaned firsthand. Moreover, the usefulness, indeed indispensability of an informed impartial guide, only grows in an environment of cacophonic background noise and random lists that characterize the internet. But surely cinema, you would say, as opposed to medicine, is a matter of taste and opinion, rather than facts and figures and skills and knowledge and expertise. Well, yes and no. Filmmaking is a discipline. It must be studied, learned and assimilated methodically and in depth. Many of its aspects are utterly objective. The same applies to film historiography and film criticism. When it comes to taste and opinion, it is true that everyone has both. Everyone has his own taste, or her own taste, and everyone has an opinion. But I would rather rely on Maltin's taste and opinion than on any Joe Schmo with a keyboard and time to kill. Even when I wholeheartedly disagree with Maltin, for instance, Black Swan and Blade Runner, and that's only on one page of the guide, I find myself challenged, enlightened, provoked and informed by the collective intelligence and unfathomable knowledge of the crew behind the book. In my view, no lover of the movies should go without a malting guide or two. But the issue is much deeper. It is a clash between experts and crowds. Wikipedia is an example of crowdsourcing. The Internet as a whole has taken a turn to the worse, against elites, against experts, against authority, against academic knowledge, against in-depth studies. And Maltin's Guide is one of those rare books who is trying to buck the trend.